Hello, my name is Hugo Bertice from the University of Barcelona and the Computer Vision Center. We present Cloud 3D, the first large-scale dataset of dressed humans, publicly available at the link shown below. Inspired by the success of deep learning in human-centric 3D domain, we believe the next step for research is garment domain. Deep learning approaches require vast amounts of data. We provide a dataset that fits these needs in terms of size and variability. Current datasets in Garmin domain lack mostly in Garmin variability and dynamics. Cloud3D aims to overcome the drawbacks of these datasets. It contains thousands of garments with its own topology distributed over thousands of dynamic sequences of humans performing different actions. We generate garments procedurally. Starting from a few template garments, we reshape, cut and resize them to automatically create unique outfits. Template garments have been designed from real patterns. Observing pattern variability for sleeves, we designed an automatic shaping algorithm. Sleeves are cylinders around the arms with variable width. We reproduce this variability in a consistent way with respect to the real world. This process can be adapted to work with trousers and skirts. Again, inspired by real patterns, we perform random cuts along sleeves and waist. Similarly, we cut trousers and skirts. We need to resize each garment to the target body shape. We make the reasonable assumption that garment sizes are consistent with human body shape variability. We transfer SMPL shape deformations to the garment through nearest neighbor. To avoid carrying body shape details, we perform Laplacian smoothing on the deformations using the garment topology. Finally, we apply these deformations to the garment. Given that they had been previously smoothed, high frequency details of the garments are preserved. An optional final step combines both upper and lower body garments into a single full body garment. If not, the outfit is composed of two garments. To simulate garments, we need valid pose sequences. We obtain them from CMU mocap data. Finally, body shape is randomly sampled for a uniform distribution. The simulation is performed in Blender an open-source 3D creation suite. Blender's cloth simulation is based on a spring mass model. The image on the right shows the different spring-like forces the simulator generates, each controllable with its corresponding parameters. This allows simulating different fabrics. We use four presets provided by Blender, cotton, silk, denim, and leather. No other dataset contains fabric variability. Cloth3D is unique in terms of garment types and cloth dynamics. In addition to the dataset, we provide with a baseline model. We know that sample dimensionality and topology is heterogeneous through the dataset. We propose a preprocessing step that encodes each garment into the same mesh. Garment is registered against SMPL body both in REST pose, using non-rigid ICP. This allows computing a more reliable matching through nearest neighbor and encoding garments as SMPL body offsets. We mask body vertices to represent garment topologies as a subset of these vertices. SMPL resolution is not enough, so we increase it and refer to it as Super SMPL. Additionally, we removed head, hands, and feet. These body parts have around half of the vertices and encode no garment information. Skirts and dresses do not follow body topology. For this reason, we propose a new body topology for registering these garment types. Our baseline architecture consists of a graph conditional variational autoencoder. In a first stage, we train with REST garments only. This allows learning a latent space for static information, as garment type, shape, and tightness. Later, we train on dynamic samples. We use the previously learned static latent space 
as a conditional variable to explicitly disentangle garment dynamics from static features. The loss is composed of three terms. First, the garment loss or data term. Later, the C-bar loss, which is used to factor out conditional variables from the latent space. And finally, the key L divergence, as it is a standard in conditional variational autoencoders. The garment loss can be further decomposed in offset, normal and mask loss as L1 norm and collision loss. Given that garments are encoded as body offsets, the collision loss can be simplified to a check whether offsets go within the body or not. These tables show the results of the ablation study. We use as metrics the surface error in millimeters, the angle difference in radians for the normals as a metric of surface quality, the intersection over union for the body mask, and the key L divergent loss as a metric of how meaningful is the latent space. Upper table shows the performance on the static model. It shows the effect of each loss term and an analysis of the error per garment type. We see that skirts and dresses are the most challenging garments. This is the expected behavior as they break the assumption that cloth follows the body. The lower table shows the performance of the dynamic model. We compare the performance obtained with and without temporal information. In the first row, only the current pose is used as input. On the lower row, we pass the current pose plus three previous poses, sampled with a step of three frames in between. We observe that providing the model with temporal information significantly improves its performance. We demonstrate that our static model is able to learn a meaningful space with respect to garment type. In the left image, we see a projection of the learned static latent space into a two-dimensional space. We can see a meaningful distribution of samples according to their garment type and topology. Additionally, this latent space allows interpolation between different static features. In the right image, we see the effects of interpolating these features. In the first row, the body shape is modified while the rest is kept constant. On the next row, we change the size of the garment. The third row shows an interpolation through the garment type space. Finally, the last two rows represent a continuous interpolation of all static features at once. Finally, in this image, we want to demonstrate the dynamic reconstruction performance of our model. Note that our model has not been trained to maintain temporal consistency in its outputs. In conclusion, after observing a lack of public data in the current garment domain, we decided to provide with the first large-scale 3D dataset of this kind. We hope to push research into this direction to overcome current and future challenges. Finally, we also proposed a baseline model able to exploit the rich garment variability of Cloth3D and learn a continuous space for garment style, which has not been done before. We are happy to announce that this dataset has already been public for months now, along with realistic RGBA renderings. This allows to tackle more complex computer vision tasks and push research in this domain as well. Finally, we would also like to highlight that we have been running a competition around this data. While the final deadline is soon, you are still on time to participate. Finally, we kindly refer to the viewers of this video to the interactive ECCV sessions and to the Clo 3D paper for further details and analysis. Thanks for your attention.